Good morning, Elder Nelson. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Lady Diane. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good morning, our Facebook fans, friends and family. Good morning to you. And I hope you aren't moving too, too slowly. You know, it's daylight savings time, so we sprang forward. So your clock should be up one hour. So we hope that you are up and ready to watch the live show as well as join us in this morning's worship. What do we have going on this month? First of all, I want to just say I want my hour back. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get it back in November. How about oh, that? Oh, Lord, that's a long time. <laughs> well, uh, before November, we got some stuff coming up. Yes, we do. So we yes, we do. And tomorrow, March the 11th, is our Pastor LaToya Harris's birthday. Woo! Yes, yes, yes. You know what that means, right? She's going to have to kick Diane at her. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh -uh. I'm in trouble now. I'm uh -uh. in trouble. Yeah, uh -oh. You're in trouble. <laughs> yes, you're in trouble. Also, along with her birthday celebration, we're going to be combining our monthly Sis Drive event. And I believe the colors are purple. And also, this is National International Women's Month. So we've got a lot of things going on. So we want to encourage everyone who is in the city and not in the city, if you want to yeah, make a short yeah. trip to come and visit with us here right. at 1818 North Confederate, North Confederate Avenue, we're going to be having our sis drive, and it begins at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow evening. Right. What else is up? Well, you know tomorrow, too, is our Man Up Sunday. So Man Up? Monday. Man right. Up Monday. Well, we're going to be in the building together. You know, we get a little jealous because y'all be getting a little hyped on that sister drive stuff. <laughs> we try to sneak in one Monday. Y'all kick me out fast. No, just for a moment. Just for a moment. Just okay. for a moment. What else we got going on in March? Also going on in March, <coughs> a few weeks away, is our 24, 20, 2024 Unstoppable Women's Conference. Yeah! Yeah! If I and the dates are, now, <laughs> <laughs> silly, the dates are March the 21st through March the 23rd. It proves to be a dynamic, yes. exciting yes. event. It's going to be fan Fabulous, if that's a word. Fantabulous. It's going to start off with uh, Lisa Knowles on yes. Thursday evening. Yes. And, and by the way, all services begin at 7 o'clock p.m. at Dale's Chapel here in Tyler, Texas. On March the 22nd, our very own Pastor Latoya Harris will be ministering woo, to woo, us. Woo. Great time in the Lord. Yes. And then on Saturday afternoon, we will have our fashion show and luncheon and the one and only Dr. Mimi Brown will be ministering to us on that day. Ooh, if it's, if it's going to be like it was last year, whew, dude. Off the chizane, as they say. Off the chizane. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Anything else in March? What we got? Also in March, the 30th is going to be our community Easter egg. Easter egg. Huh? Yeah. In the very own Emmett Scott Park, which is directly across the street from the church, uh, it proves to be a wonderful event. We have all the people, all the people from the community yes, come to yes. join. And even people that aren't in this immediate community come to partake in it. We're going to have games, fun, food, music. So we're inviting everyone to come out. Also making sure that all the members of this church are participating and doing what has been asked for you to do in preparation for this event. Just one warning. There will be one adult knocking over kids. I'm not pointing at him. He... Yeah, your kid's going to be dusty. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just saying. He, he's somewhere in the building. He'll pick them up and make sure that they're safe, though. Yeah, I'm going to get their kids out their bag. Go on, sis. What's going on up in March? And then <laughs> on March the 21st is going to be Easter Sunday, Resurrection Ooh. Sunday. And we will have, I believe, our Easter program. Yes. Our youth yes. will be performing um, uh, a skit, doing uh, verses, whatever. Uh, on Easter Sunday, so we want to support them as much as we can, so please, please, please remember those dates, March the 30th, our community Easter egg hunt, and then March the 31st, Resurrection Sunday, yes. our Easter program. I knew you were going to make some speeches. I knew you were. <laughs> I was ready. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's go on. In April, April 20th, we're going to start back with our outreach ministry. Yes. Woo! Out here at Emma Scott Park. Uh, under the direction of Elder Troy Wood. Yes, Elder Troy Wood. Oh, yeah, yeah. April 21st, we're going to start our Youth and College Sunday. 
Yes, that's going to be exciting. That's I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see that. I'm excited. I think it's going to be really great. We do have a lot of youth. We do have students some college students attending uh, here at the kingdom, and so I'm excited to celebrate them yeah. and for them to be celebrated. Yeah. And finally, in April, April through 8th is our Men's Sunday Man yeah. Up. Yeah. And you know what? I like to brag on us because our Men's Sundays be off the shizzle. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. Off the Chazelle, off the Chazane. Yeah, 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 you're right, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I, I imagine if my daughter knew that, they tell me, Daddy, don't say that. Just <laughs> stay in your lane. Me and her mama will be trained. Yeah. All right. Was well, that it, ladies? Guys? I think that is it. We just want to remind you all that this is the Kingdom Church, a.k.a. the Love Church. Yes. We're located at 1818 North Confederate yes. Avenue here in Tyler, Texas, and we invite you to come and join come in. On. Come and join us and have a spirit filled time. To God be all the glory. Love you. At this time, I think we're going to have announcements. Yes. Thank you. Welcome all of our newest members. Welcome. Happy birthday to all the birthdays in March. Christian Education is every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Find yourself getting involved. For more information, please see Elder Troy Wood. And here are our upcoming events and announcements. Is this your first time joining us here at the Kingdom Church? If so, our pastors would love to meet you. We are asking all new guests and visitors to please line up in the hallway for a meet and greet. Please be cognizant of those behind you. Do you have a prayer request? Prayer requests are now submitted on church track. Baptism sign up and baby christenings are also available on church track. We are looking for volunteers. If you would like to sign up to be a volunteer for a ministry, please see a team lead today. The Kingdom Church Business Corner is open now. If you would like to have your business information posted, please see a member of the administration team. Maximize Manhood is every first and third Monday. We're inviting all of our men to come out. First Fruit Vows are due today at our church anniversary. If you have not already, please be sure to sign up for your First Fruit Vow. It's our anniversary. Today we will be celebrating 13 years in ministry. On March the 17th, Pastor Darius will be ministering in Lufkin, Texas. March the 21st through the 23rd will be the Unstoppable Women's Conference. Be sure to register today. On March the 30th, we will have our annual Easter hunt. We would like to ask for everyone to please sign up to bring items. And that concludes our Sunday morning announcements. Let's get ready for worship. you we thank you for being here this morning i'm reminded in the book of romans 6 and 23 it said the wages of sin is death but the free gift of god is eternal life through christ jesus our lord how many y'all glad that grace stepped in so you could be here this morning to celebrate our great king i thank him for his glory i thank him for his power i thank him for showing up for us this morning if y'all excited open up your mouth are you excited let him know you're here. He's waiting on a certain sound to touch this atmosphere. We come here tonight, God, today, God. We're excited. We're expecting you to move in this place. Oh, Heavenly Father, as your people walk into the sanctuary, I pray your glory. Meet them at the door. My child, when they walk in, God, we will be excited. You will hear hands clapping. You will hear feet stomping. God, we excited about what you did. You could have left us in the hospital. Some of us in the hospital. You could have left us in the hospital. You could have left us in the grade. But you saw that grace, which what might have unmerited favor, stepped in so we can live. So since we are alive, we're going to give you a shout. We're going to give you a praise. Some people need music. Some people need drums. But when I think about the goodness of God, I can make up my own sound. I can make up my own music. Let your hand be like timbrels. Let your feet be like drums. Let your mouth be like a trumpet. Oh, Mother Pink, I'm thinking about what he did. So several years ago, he didn't leave me where my shape. He could have left me where I was, but he picked me up, uh, stood me up, uh, put me on solid ground. I'm standing at a solid church. Jesus said it best. 
upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We stand it in a place where God's glory abounds. We stand it in a place where God touched his people. I'm expecting today when grace walk in, uh, some of you all uh, have been going through something. Some of you all uh, feel God moving. I don't know my shake. Hey, God, I'm asking you uh, as the service go on, uh, as the service move, uh, touch your people. Touch them on to the left. Uh, touch them on to the right. Uh, do the motion not say I'm sorry y'all I just had a moment I thought about the time I, I could have lost my life but grace stepped in I thought about the time when I was in that wreck grace stepped in can you remember the time that grace stepped in grace Calamache grace saved you grace left you here grace covered you Grace bless you. I'm looking at some people that survived by grace. I'm looking at some people are healed by grace. Grace put us in a place. Put us under your wing. Put us in your protection. My God, my God. I'm not shouting my shame. I think about my mama when she was here. Grace covered her. I'm thinking about my daddy. Grace covered him. Can y'all this morning think about her? What grace did for you, how grace saved you, how I saved your kids, how I saved your daddy, how I saved your mama, how I saved your auntie. My God, my God, grace saved you. Even though you was in the hospital, grace stepped in. When you was on the deadbed, grace stepped in. Tell them my shape, the grave will call it, but grace will stroke her. My God, my God, God to lay. We gonna shout today. We gonna praise because of grace. Today gonna be a grace service. Today gonna be a grace service. We gonna think about your goodness and mercy. 23rd Psalms, chapter verse 6. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. How many of y'all know goodness and mercy have been following you? Goodness and mercy been following your family oh god we thank you for covering our families we thank you for covering the church covering the kids covering our pastors cover the ministers cover the leaders cover the teenager grace we do it today we invite grace in grace all in the service grace all in your lives somebody Grace is your protection. Grace is your covering. Grace is your way out. Grace let me dip. Grace help me escape death. Grace help me get out of the car. Grace help me to get out of the house. Grace help me to get from the gun. You should have been shot. But grace blocked it. Grace blocked it. Can somebody say grace blocked it? You can't afford to block grace. You can't afford to lose grace. You can lose your mind, but you can't lose grace. You can lose your wife, but you can't lose grace. You can lose your kids, but you can't lose grace. Grace is too much. Grace is too much. Grace, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. I'm looking at people that are grace survivors. Y'all are grace survivors. The drugs could kill you. The alcohol could kill you. The rumor could kill you. The lie could kill you. The car wreck. The medicine. The overdose. The depression. It could kill you. Grace. Yes, somebody say, pray. Have your way, Grace. Have your way, Grace. We invite you in. We invite you in. Get in our business. Get in our business. Get in our business. Get in our kids' business. Grace, block school shooting. Grace, block 
college shooting. Get somebody that feels good this morning. Say thank you, Grace. Say thank you, Grace. Grace, let me walk in. Grace, let me walk in. Grace, let me walk. I couldn't walk one time to meet her. I couldn't walk. But Grace, let me get up. Grace, let me get up. Grace protected me. Grace protected me. Grace protected y'all. Grace protected y'all. Grace protected y'all. God, let the spirit of grace, let the gift of grace saturate, saturate, saturate every seat. Saturate every woman. Saturate every man. We call by grace. We cover by grace. Thou covered in grace. Grace is your outer covering. Covered in calabash. Grace is your clothes. Let us wear grace this morning. Are y'all excited? Are y'all expected? Are y'all grateful? I'm closing with this. I remember that song say, grateful, grateful, grateful. How many of y'all grateful this morning? Make a loud noise and let your son of our shape. Let your Savior, Jesus Christ, Know how grateful you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we have any grateful people in the house of God this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, begin to lift your hands. Come on, begin to open up your mouth. Come on, we came to lift God this morning. Come on, we came to lay, lay our burdens at the altar. Come on and open up your mouth and praise God like you know how. Come on, if you know God to be your everything, I tell you to open up your mouth. Hallelujah. Like he's your everything. Come on, without God, we are nothing. Hallelujah. Come on and open up your mouth and praise God. Come on and look to a neighbor and say neighbor God is my everything come on and look to another neighbor and say neighbor God is my everything hallelujah come on and put those hands together like you love them this morning come on we came to lift up the name of Jesus we came to give God what is due unto him come on and make some noise yeah
tell you I love you. I just really wanna tell you I love you. And I just really wanna tell you I need you. Oh, yeah. 
For I dare you to open up your mouth. Come on and worship him. Hallelujah. If God is your everything, I dare you to worship him. Come on, I can't hear nobody. Come on, let's worship God in this place. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for grace and mercy. God, we thank you for your love towards us. God, we thank you for dying on the cross so that you and I may have life more abundantly. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Come on and open up your mouth and worship him. God is waiting on your response. Come on and worship him. Hallelujah. God has been too good to some of us for us to sit here and not open up our mouth and worship him. Come on, we all been through some things. It's okay to open up your mouth. It's okay to lift your hands. It's okay to go into worship. Hallelujah. Because the relationship between you and God, that's all that matters. Come on and worship him in this place on today. God, you're so merciful. God, we love you. God, we adore you. We put no one before you, God. You're everything. You are Alpha and Omega, God. You are the beginning and the end, God. We trust you with our whole heart on today. Come on and open up your hearts towards God on today. God, we bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Come on, if you know God has rescued you from some things, I dare you to open your mouth. Yeah. Come on and worship him in this place. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life, and I'm never going back. Jesus rescued my life. Is that anybody's testimony? Jesus rescued my life.
just a bunch of grateful and thankful people today. I'm just thankful. Don't have nothing to do with money, but I'm just thankful, grateful all that he has done. Somebody wish they could trade places with you while we complain. God 
should have been through with you a long time ago. I'm not trying to start nothing. He should have gave you another chance. Somebody was done with it, and God touched their heart and said, give them another chance. Thank you, Lord. All right. Lady Shakiba, she just lost her grandmother, and if she can give God a praise and grief and praise, God, I think y'all can give her 60 
the front and give God a praise. He said, I saved every last one of y'all, all three of y'all, from jail time and from prison. Hurry up, y'all. If y'all hurry up, nation, get in here. And he said, I gave y'all a brand new future. He said, you know exactly what could have went south, what could have went wrong, what could have went left. Are y'all going to leave the musicians to praise God by themselves? But God says, I, you're not just gig musicians. You are my musicians. And I anoint you even the further from this day forward. Cover you and protect you in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against you shall prosper.
back to them 30, 40, 60, 100 fold return for trusting you with their resources, their finances. And Father God, we thank you that we believe your word. It's not something we just do, but we believe in what we do. And thank you for meeting all our needs according to your riches that are in glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you all for what you're giving. Listen, we're going to steadily move um, the service further. We want our choir to prepare to render us a selection as the parents come. But at this time, I believe it's Elder Wood going to give them a hand as he comes. Amen. And do the next portion of our service on this Sunday morning. Put y'all hands together. Hey, y'all enjoy, are y'all enjoying service so far? This atmosphere is saturated with grace. I thank you for your grace. Could y'all do me a favor, put y'all hands together for our two fabulous, wonderful pastors, Pastor Darius and Pastor Latoya Harris. There's nobody like them. We were in Christian education this morning, and we were talking about, do you know who you serve? I think it's appropriate. To, I can tell you who we serve. And how, how about y'all? Pastor Darius is very humble. He will put you in front of him even though he's been called. He's giving. It's very comical. Amen. But he also caring. Them are great qualities you would want in your pastor. You can't even find that. So if y'all really admire the words that come out of his mouth through the word of God, stand to y'all feet, y'all hands together. We just celebrated 13 years of pastoral anniversary. Could you give it up for the two greatest leaders this side of heaven? I believe God looking down and saying, they're my children, they're my pastor, the one and only Pastor Darius Harris, morning coffee. Pastor Latoya Harris, make a joyful noise in this sanctuary. You got to give people their flowers while they're here. It don't make no sense you got flowers at the cemetery and tell them what you think about them. No, I'm going to tell it right now, amen. They going to get so sick of me, they're the word, you got to stop. I'm, I'm, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. I want them to tell me to stop, Amen. And before our pastor come, don't we got one of the greatest church choirs in this area? When I think of Kingdom Church, what y'all name? I think about KFC. It's so good. They sang so good. In April, Minister Man, I'm gonna join the choir. He like to faint it. Oh, y'all don't think I can sing? They laugh. Okay, I got something for y'all. What, what, what? Amen. Immediate following the, the choir, after the leadership of Minister Joe Mann, could y'all stand to y'all feet, embrace one of the grace pastoral that walk on this earth by the name of Pastor David Harris, y'all in the hands of Minister Joe Lee Mann.
Sometimes you need more. I'm not saying not to diminish your word, but oftentimes you just need a worship experience. Amen. That can take us and catapult us to the, to the next level. Come on, let's give God praise for everything that went uh, thus far, everything that went place thus far. Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. We're so glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Kingdom Church, we have some guests that are here with us. Let's give God praise for our first time guests, second and third time guests. But we do have a first-time guest with her, and I want to be sure I'm saying the name correctly. Is Hi. I'm going to say the last name. Hi, Betty. Hi. Did I say that correctly? I didn't say it right. You, uh, your smile told me I didn't say it all the way right. So, Betty. Hey, Sister Betty. Hi. Hey, man, I like that. Sister, y'all give God praise with Sister Betty. Hi. Thank you for worshiping with us. Hey, Amen. She is a guest of Trevon and John. Give God praise for Trevon and Amen, Trevon and John, hallelujah. They have been inviting people, amen, left and right. We're glad you're here to worship with us, amen, on today. Hi, let's give God praise for our chief apostle, Dr. Todd M. Hall. Someone shout hallelujah. Amen, also we do want to acknowledge, amen, Lady Shakira lost a loved one. Let's continue to keep her, amen, in prayer. Lost a grandmother. Also the Mott family, amen, lost her grandpa. And then a few days later, Lady Tracy had a bad accident, and she's here in the house of the Lord, giving God, oh, come on, hush it, giving God praise, hallelujah. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it could have been worse. Somebody give God praise. He didn't spare people lives. He didn't spare people mind. People don't have to be in good spirits, and they still coming, giving God praise. You never know what your neighbor been through in order for them to get here. You don't know what. The person you're sitting by, amen, going through in order for him, in order for them to be here, amen, on today. Amen. Let, let's give the great ministers who minister on Wednesday night a round of applause, amen. Minister Joe Manns and Elder Troy Wood approved to win. And also Elder Wood talked about unrecognized grace. Let's give them a great round of applause one more time, amen. Awesome job, hallelujah. We're just looking forward to continuing even ministers going forth in this series on grace. How many of y'all been enjoying this grace series? I mean, I also want to acknowledge, amen, we do have Pastor Toya's birthday on tomorrow. Someone give God, amen. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> and we'll give information up later if you would like to be a blessing to her on her birthday. Amen. She'll be more than welcome. I, I just know she's good ground, not just because she's my wife. She's fertile ground, and she's a she's a blessing to so many people in so many ways. So we just want to celebrate her on today and tomorrow and the rest of this month and even some of y'all birthdays. Let's give God praise for all our March birthdays. God bless you, babe. And they are doing something tomorrow. You say, and, and Brother Lee on the same day as well. Tomorrow. Y'all give God praise for Brother Lee. That's a birthday twin. He's in a medium move, Brother Lee, where he waving his hand. Hallelujah. We're going to go into the word of the Lord. We're also, we have our unstoppable comfort just right around the corner. The 21st to the 23rd. Y'all give God prayer right around the corner. And we're looking forward to it. Amen. It's, it's an awesome experience. Amen. For the women, but also an awesome experience. We as men, also we serve, but we get to sneak in service a little bit. Amen. To get some of the crumbs. And sometimes that's all you need, the crumbs, <laughs> amen, that'll bless us, hallelujah. But we've been in a series of grace, and I made a few definitions up, if that's okay with you guys. That's okay with you guys. I, I, made, a I made probably three or four definitions up, uh, 
amen, doing this series. But, but first, I, I, I just want to define, I really want to continue on our topic, Jonah, because we really didn't get through with it all, you know, because, you know, the Holy Spirit had its way, and I believe you guys had so much fire and urgency, and I just want to, you know, be obedient to the Lord, and as often as the night and say, a pastor just let the Lord use you. Sometimes he go in a different direction. Sometimes that's what he does. We are prophetic ministry, and, and oftentimes he will go in a direction that maybe we didn't think he would go in. But I, I really want to continue to stay in that same vein, so I really don't have a lot of scriptures, amen, for us to bring out today. But but I want to talk about one thing that I think Jonah and others, amen, experience, and all of us has experienced. I want to talk about one definition before we go into the definition I made up. Someone shout selfish. Selfish means, Brother Carlos, it's lacking the consideration for others concerned with one's own personal profit or pleasure. And, and I'm going somewhere, and this, I hope this makes sense even towards the, the next few minutes or even towards the end. Some people are selfish. Someone shout selfish. Now, l now let's look at another word definition called grace. Someone shout grace. grace. We've been talking about this series of grace, uh, Elder Norman, and we know that grace is unmerited favor or it's understood as undeserved favor. In other words, it's understood as if though that uh, uh, you, you can't do anything to earn God's favor. Someone shout amen to this. Amen. Like, I don't care uh, uh, what you do. I, I don't care how much you praise, how much you pray, how much you shout, how much you give. It's, it's a certain element, not trying to tell you to be lazy in the things that you do for God, but, but we really have to have faith to believe that we're going to receive his unmerited favor. That we're going to receive grace. So, so in order to receive grace, you got to have an element of faith. Can I give somebody a shout amen? amen. And, and grace is not an excuse for us to do what we want to do. You know, just got out of bed with Betsy Sue. I'm under grace. Yeah. That's not how it works. Right. And the enemy played with my mind because he talked to me like he talked to you. When y'all talking about these series of grace, what he told me, you're basically trying to get a permission, a permission for people to sin. And the Lord say, that's not true at all. Don't listen to the enemy because grace will turn you away from your sin. Can I get somebody to shout amen? And we might go into it later on. Amen. When I'm under grace, in other words, it'll give me the ability to live right. Amen. amen. So it's not an excuse for me to do whatever I want to do. So we want to make that clear once again that grace is not a permission to, or grace is not a license. Someone shout to sin. But this is a definition I made up, selfish grace. Selfish grace, in other words, amen, it, it, it can refer to seeking undeserving favor for oneself while simultaneously denying or withholding that grace for others. In other words, we want grace for ourselves, but we don't want grace for other people. And the word selfish grace, it kind of seemed paradoxical because it seemed like it's too opposite of one another. Like, we want God to forgive us, but we necessarily don't want God to forgive others. I believe Jonah dealt with selfish grace. And some of us have had another definition, Jonatic experiences, right? Well, we was upset that God, yeah, yeah, that's my definition. Y'all looking at me crazy, but I told you, we're going to make three or four definitions of today. Some of us have been through jonatic experiences. Am I right about it? Where we was upset that God forgave our enemies when God had forgave us. So we have become selfish with God's grace. And one thing I want to talk about this, and before we go a little bit further, amen, I, I, I don't know why I'm continuing to stay uh, in, this, in this series, not really saying on Jonah, but, but on grace. I believe this really series can extend the whole year, but we ain't not going to go that long past this month. But, but I want to say this, I mean, a lot of people are called by God, and Jonah was called by God. And a good indication, you know, when you're called of God, when you're in a place of being disobedient and people still are getting delivered. Have you ever been at a place where you weren't supposed to be? And they told you, preacher boy, what are you doing here? Girl, I see God's glory over your life. You don't need to be in this club or it's going to burn down. Okay, I can't get, get no help. See, Jonah was disobedient, Mr. Ronald. He was running away from God, right? While he was running away from God, God allowed the locks to fall upon Jonah. And they say, Jonah, you are the problem. In other words, they threw Jonah overboard so the storm can stop. 
Sometimes certain people in your life, you got to throw them overboard so they storm won't continue to interrupt your life. Have you ever had a storm that really didn't have nothing to do with you, but it was connected to the person that was around you, and you wanted the storm to stop? And in order for the certain storm to stop, you got to throw certain people overboard so the storms can stop, so you can continue to do your daily living, praising and worshiping God. Because some people you get connected with, they'll wrap you around a tornado, they'll wrap you around a web. You got to throw them overboard, especially if they're walking out of the will of God. I know we're supposed to be around sinners to help get them saved, but, but I cannot be so in cahoots with them that they're outside of God's will. I will be outside of God's will because I do not want to be associated with the things that you're doing. So I can hang with you, but I can't hang with you like that. Come on. Because I don't, don't want to get it mixed up. I don't want my good to be spoken evil of. Come on now. If I ain't cheating and dipping, lying, manipulating, I don't want to be around no cheating, dipping, and lying, and manipulating individual. I can't get no help. And some people are intimidated of you because you are righteous. They mad because they can't get nothing on you. Do you know some people are, are intimidated of your righteous behavior? You, you're not perfect. You told them you're not perfect. You told them you had sin. You even told them some of your darkest secrets are. But they're mad because they can't find that on you now. And some people will continue to dig up until they finally find some. But they upset because you already told everybody. You better learn to tell people before they tell people. Because when you tell it, at least you will tell it the right way. But when they tell it, they'll add a whole bunch of other stuff to it. So let me go ahead on and tell you I done it. Slept with them, I lied, I cheated, I stole, I went to jail, I went to prison, I done it all. I know I shouldn't have done it, but let me go ahead and tell you why you digging in my business. Let me go ahead and give you something. Right, yeah, yeah, I know you're all in my business, but you know what? I'm going to write a book on about what I did, and God going to bless me because of my past, uh, and my mess going to become my message. My mess going to become my message, Pastor. So let me go ahead on and confess. Because you keep looking and digging to find some dirt on me. It's some dirt on me just like it's some dirt on you. Dirt all on your neck. Wearing about the beam in my eye when you got a boat in your eye. You're a hypocrite. Jesus called them hypocrites. But Jonah was disobedient. Jonah said, I don't like the assignment you gave me. I'm not finna go down there to Nineveh when they my enemies. Because if I know if I go down there to Nineveh and you want me to preach to them, they just might get delivered. And I don't want them to get delivered. Have God ever gave you an assignment, Mimi, you didn't want to do? Lord, I know you ain't trying to tell me to speak to them. Because if I speak to them, I know the anointing God placed over my life. They just might get set free. And to be honest with you, I don't want them set free. Let's go ahead on and be honest. Some people, we don't want to see set free. Oh, you've been there before. Now, you may have matured in your Christian walk. But it was a time. I, I, come on. I, I, I smile. A smile came on my face when you was going through calamity. But I have matured, and I don't want to wish nothing on my worst enemy. But it was a time, and some of y'all are not too far away from that time, when a smile got on your face. When your enemy was going through. You like it to hear that news. See, they should never been messing with me. That's what they get. They, they need to leave me alone. God got my back. See, God got me, honey. God ain't going to let you mess with his child. So that ain't God's child. See, that's why God messing with your stuff because you don't know how to keep your mouth off of me. It was a time. It was a time. It was a time. You snuckled and chuckled and laughed. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me pray for them. You didn't mean that. You didn't mean it at all. And when you're praying for your enemy, stop all them long prayers if you don't mean it. You better pray real quick. God, keep them saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't, don't be praying no fake stuff that you don't mean. You're wasting a bunch of time. If you don't like that individual and you know it and in your heart, you better make that prayer real quick. Don't be, you can't fool God. God know you don't mean it. You don't even got to go to the heavenlies. They say, God, keep them saved. Protect their mind, protect their children. 
Lord, you know I don't care nothing about them, but I got to love them because it's in your word. I, I have to love your enemies. I mean, my enemies. But they was your enemies, but now you favoring they like that. ain't fair, God. How that happen? But how that happen, Mother? Give God praise for our church, Mother. Speak out, Mother. But Jonah was disobedient, but he still was a deliverer. You ever been in a disobedient place, but you always found yourself around people and you was delivering them anyway? These people got saved, in other words, I would say, when they threw Jonah overboard, they repented late the other night, and they said, you know what, Lord, forgive us, right? We don't want this sin or his blood to be on our hands. And they began to offer sacrifices unto the Lord. In other words, Jonah told them, hold on, you're in the situation that you're in because of me. If you throw me overboard, you'll get rid of your problem. At least Jonah manned up and owned up to his situation. And some of us ought to own up, man up, woman up. Listen, I am the problem. If you get rid of me, your problems will cease. But the problem with us, we'll sit there and stay asleep like Jonah will sleep and we'll wake up good like we ain't the problem. You know when you are the problem. See, some of us know when we are the problem. At least Jonah admitted I was the problem and I thought I was going to get away, but obviously I cannot get away. Have you ever thought you was going to get away with something? Then all of a sudden the Lord started knocking on your door. Uh, I got grace, but you didn't get away with what you just done now. Oh, yeah, I'm going to forgive you, but I still got to whip you behind. No, I didn't forget. No, when you got a real parent, although you done something, they ain't forget. They just didn't want to whip you in their anger. You went to sleep and thought it was all over. And now you still got a whipping when you get up. You, you, no, no, we get back home. I don't want to embarrass myself in front of the grocery store, in front of Walmart. See, kids know when to act up. They'll act up in one of the most inconvenient places for you. And the people about to call CPS right there. And you ain't, you want to shake them, but you can't shake them because they're looking at you. So what are you going to do, the little Johnny? They got their phone right here. They take pictures, you know, this is this, this not the time to whoop little Johnny in the, in the public. You better have some wisdom. Okay. Hallelujah. But Jonah had an element of grace on his life, right? Because sharks were in the Mediterranean Sea. He could have been ate by a shark, but he was swallowed by a fish God prepared. Some of you ought to give God praise because God could have killed you for the last thing that you've done. But the fact that you still got breath in your body is enough to give God praise. You ought to give God praise that the shark did not kill you. Okay. Man, he could have been ate by a shark. Immediately, y'all, y'all, come on now, hallelujah. Well, it could have been a shark that swallowed him up. Yeah, 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 because some theologians, they say this story is not true because they say a person cannot survive in the well for that many days. Uh, but it has been some common experiences uh, where certain kind of sharks or uh, where people have been found in a particular shark uh, that really didn't bite you but it swallowed you and the human beings have been left alive in the shark uh, for additional four or five days. Uh, so if, if it can happen in in our common area and if God prepared a fish, uh, hallelujah, that means uh, it could happen. In other words, let me tell you this, uh, God prepared a situation to swallow you up but not to kill you. God prepared a situation to swallow you up but it did not kill you, Jonah. Somebody said, Lord, I thank you for my life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I thank you for my life. In other words, grace swallowed him up when a shark could have ate him up. Jonah was in the jaws of hell. Have you ever been in the jaws of hell? And when you was in the jaws of hell, you prayed that God would deliver you. And you prayed that God would bring you out of what you're in. In other words, Jonah was experiencing, I would say, seasickness. Right? And seasickness, in other words, is a result of a conflict in the inner ear where the human balance mechanism resides and it caused a vessel of erratic motion of the water. See, Jonah did not want to hear the voice of God, so that's why he was sick at sea. Okay, y'all help me. 
Have you ever experienced motion sickness before? God wanted you to move in a total different direction in your life. And you're sick and you're going through right now simply because you don't want to give God a yes. You don't want to be obedient to God, so you're dealing with motion sickness. You, you want to throw up. Uh, you're dealing with headaches and backaches and everything else uh, because there's a problem in your inner ear. You heard God, but you turned a deaf ear to God. You know what God told you to do. You know what God told you to be. You know what God told you to say, but you turn God off and say, God, I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm going to take a trip to Tarshish, and I'm going to go in the opposite direction. How many of you have ever made up in your mind, God, I don't care what you're saying, I'm going to go in the opposite direction. I'm going somewhere totally different. I, I pay to be outside of God's will. Why? Because I don't like my assignments. See, we like appointments, but we don't like assignments. Appointments pay. Assignments get people delivered. Appointments fit in your schedule. Can I say that? But assignments don't fit in your schedule. Appointments are about your convenience, but an assignment is out of your inconvenience. Appointment is ministering and preaching to people that you like, but an assignment when God gives you, you don't like them, you can't stand them. They talked about you, they scandalized your name. There is a difference between appointments and assignment. It's okay to have appointments, sir, but don't let God's assignment get in the way of your appointment. I can't. It's all right to have appointments. But when God has an assignment over your life, when you tell God no, you're flirting with danger. When you tell God no and you want to be in and out inconsistent, I can't get no help. You're flirting with your future. God may not physically kill you, but he spiritually can kill you. That can affect your kids and your kids' kids simply because uh, you're walking in error and you're being disobedient to what God told you to be or what he told you to do. Can I get somebody to shout amen? So Jonah was seasick. He heard God, but he turned the deaf ear to God. How many of you ever turned the deaf ear to God? God, I hear you, but I ain't trying to hear you right now. Nah, I know you ain't telling me to give no $200. I'm not, not to me. I know you ain't telling me to pray for them. They took my man. How am I going to pray for them? They took my man, God, and you telling me to pray and fast two meals? Are you out of your help? Okay. Can't get nobody help. Press go say she been there. Huh? How you gonna tell me to do something that goes against my will? You gonna make me look like a fool. You telling me to bless them when they stole from me. Yeah, yeah okay, y'all don't help me talk. You you, you you telling me to forgive them, but they haven't even apologized correctly yet. See, forgiveness is for them even, even if they don't apologize the right way. So, so God, I got an issue with your assignment. At least Jonah was real. Jonah had an issue with the assignment God gave him. I don't want to go there. Why? Because the Assyrian people were barbaric. In other words, there was a barbaric people. They, they destroyed their enemies. In other words, after they destroyed their enemies, they, they dismembered them. They disfigured them. They, they made them look like there was nothing. And they also was the enemies of the Israelites. So, so I know God ain't trying to tell me to preach to these people because I know God is a gracious God and God just might forgive them. I like them and I'm comfortable with them being my enemy. But let me tell you this, just because they're your enemy don't mean they got to remain God's enemy. Just because I don't like them don't mean God don't like them. If they get it right with God, even if you don't get it right with them, you got to at least synchronize with God's will and say, you know what, they got it right with God, so I'm out of the picture. But the problem is uh, we want to hold people's sin over their head. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. We want to hold they sin hostage over their head where they can't receive the same grace that you receive. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor. Say, we all need an element of grace. Say, we all need grace. 
So Jonah was slipping away, and, and while he was passing, and he was about to die, amen, the Bible said, he said, I will offer sacrifices and sing praises. When, when he thought of that, because he was in a situation, he couldn't really get a word out. Have you ever been in a situation where you can even praise the way you wanted to praise? Have you ever been in a situation, all you can do is think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for you? And sometimes God will take that thought as an act and a moment of praise. When Jonah thought about all that God done for him and he thought about the praises, the, 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 when the whale spit him out. And I believe that we're in a situation that sometimes you can't even speak a mumbling word. But if I think about the goodness of Jesus, uh, you're going to get spit out of the situation that you're in. So say, Lord, I thank you for spitting me out of that situation. And I'm not going to really read a lot of the third chapter at all. I'm just going to kind of give a brief description of it. But on chapter 3, when Jonah began to speak to God, God commands Jonah a second time to go to Nineveh and preach. And Jonah obeys and warns Nineveh of the impending destruction. But can I say this? Jonah didn't preach an element of grace. Jonah only preached destruction. All right, since you give me another chance, Lord, all right, I'm going to go and preach to them. Listen, Nineveh, y'all going to hell. Now, God, now you saved my life. I'm going to be obedient. It was no element of grace in there whatsoever. Y'all going to hell 40 days? Yeah, God going to destroy this place? Well, well come on, Jonah. Is God, now, God ain't going to forgive you. You had your chance. Come on, Jonah. No, 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 no. Now you're going to hell. God going to destroy you. He going to destroy your cows. He going to destroy your cats. He going to destroy your dogs. He going to destroy your cows. He going to destroy everything. Now, God, you want me to tell the people. Now, let me go ahead on and tell the people. Let me go ahead and get it off my chest. Yeah, yeah I'm Jonah up in here. Yeah, all y'all going to hell. You should know you done, you done wrong by me. You done wrong by my people. It was no grace in Jonah's message whatsoever. It was no mercy. He went hood. It was no mercy in Jonah's message. Jonah didn't say, repent. Maybe God would change the narrative of the situation. There was no repentance in Jonah's message. But we tell you to repent, tell God you're sorry, and we preach a little hard, and you look at us like we didn't lost our absolute mind. Jonah said, you know what? You're going to hell. 40 days, God going to destroy this place. And I hope he do it before 40 days. You had your chance. I didn't want to give you this word, but God made me give you this word. He swallowed me up in a prepared fish, and he spit me out at the right place. And what was supposed to take me three days to deliver the word, Jonah delivered the word in one day walking through the city of Nineveh. Y'all not going to make it. It's too late. So one day, there was no grace, none, in Jonah's message. But the king said, hold on. We need to repent. Good preaching should drive you to a place of repentance. Even if we don't tell you, you need to ask God to forgive. No, you should be convicted enough in your own mind. If we don't call an altar, I'm going to do my own altar call. Lord, forgive me. The word was what I needed to hear. Lord, forgive me for my sins. We should always have to tell you to repent. You know what you did last summer. You know what. You know what you did. You know what you did yesterday night. I sound prophetic. I don't want to say like. You know what you did last week. You, you know the last text message was ungodly and it was unholy. You know the picture that you shared was ungodly. Well, you know you need to repent. If we don't offer repentance, you, you Lord, I need to repent. Right now. You can't blame us because we didn't offer salvation. You know you need to be saved. You know, with good preaching and conviction, you know I've done some stuff. I need to be saved all over again. We was younger. I was in the salvation line every Sunday because I was not sure. Other night, when the pastor called for it, I, listen, I, 
I thought you guys say last week, leave me alone, bro. I'm not sure. Because I know I got some stuff in me. I take another chance getting into that line again and again. Laugh at me if you want to. I know if the word say, I know some people think once saved, always saved. But just in case, Lord, save me again. Oh, somebody ought to open up their mouth and say, Lord, just in case. Say, save me all over again. Ain't nothing wrong with that. In the line Easter, in the line Good Friday, and in the line after Easter, and ten other times throughout the year, just in case. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Say, just in case. So there was no whatsoever repentance in Jonah's message. So what the king did, he said, you know what, we're going to fast. The cows ain't going to eat. The dogs ain't going to eat. The mule ain't going to eat. So they, they got in sackcloths and ashes. Y'all give me that uh, picture of that cartoon character. Give me that picture. Y'all see, this is what he was like. The king said, we're going to do this right here. See, some of y'all don't know how to get God's attention. If I was in the Old Testament, this would have been me right here. Lord, please. We didn't mess up. Y'all know how to worship, Lord, I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I don't help the Lord. See, some of y'all too pride. You'll beg for your wife, but you won't beg to a God. Okay, you, you got too much pride. You'll beg for that no good job that barely paid you minimum wage to keep you, but you won't say, God, I'm sorry for what I've done. No, no, you begging the wrong people. You begging for a boyfriend who's going to leave you anyway. Why you can't? Use that same kind of energy and direct it towards God. Direct it towards God. Man, if I mess up in the Old Testament, this one, I'm going to be like right here, Lord, please. G give me that old man. Seth Claus and Ashes, I need that old man right now. That's how I'm going to be, Lord. Lord, please. God, I'm going to I'm gonna have to heal this boy, Lord, please. Lovely, lovely. See, some of y'all don't know when you mess up. See, God, God, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care if you don't got no tongue. Yeah, 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 that'll work every time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 please. Y'all ain't sorry. Y'all ain't sorry. When you're sorry. A certain kind of action come out of you. You try not to repeat the same behavior, although you may do it again. I'm going to turn. Because the Greek word for repentance means to turn. Metanoia, it means to change your mind. But it's also a physical element to that definition, which means to lay prostrate before God. So how are an individual going to tell you they sorry? I'm sorry. With no enthusiasm. That's a dry I'm sorry. We do that to God. Why we think we got to be lazy with our apology to God. But we're not lazy with our apology to man. Why we got to be lazy with our worship? Why we have to be lazy with our praise? Some of us have been taught the wrong way. A praise is, comes out of you. Well, I praise God in my mind, no. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. So if God really in your heart, it should come out of your mouth. I had to get beyond of a place of being embarrassed and what people think about me and say, Lord, I love you. Forget what everybody else think about me. This is me and you. I'm going to be like this old man right here. God ain't finna strike me down. Soon as that prophet came, Lord, everybody going on a fan. Seth cloth and ashes. Man, I'm going to give me some ashes, man. <laughs> God going to forgive me. You going to go to hell you want to, but God going to forgive me. As a matter of fact, this is how I'm going to be. Get to that next person. Give me that young man. Give me that young man. I need that young man. I'm going to be just like this, covered in ashes. Lord, ass all in my mouth. 
about to choke myself. Right? That's what they did. Mimi, why are you laughing? <laughs> Mrs. Jack. This was their custom. <laughs> Help me out, Norman. Whatever it takes. This was their custom, Lady Mott, to show God they were sorry. Huh? I would have been just like this. You would have come by my house. What's going on? I'm, I'm repenting to the Lord. This is me and God right now. Covered with nothing but ash. Matter of fact, some of y'all ought to be burning some wood right now. Just for some spare ashes. Just in case. I would have had some spare ashes. Just in case I mess up with God. I don't got to burn the wood because God might take me out before I burn the wood. I got some spare ashes right there on the I'm talking, it's going to be all in my eyes, nose, everything. Yeah. See, y'all y'all, y'all ain't sorry. This is not going the right direction. I'm glad the Holy Ghost had his way earlier. because. <laughs> we're going to skip this part. <laughs> oh, we're going to skip this part. But the king knew you can take it from that because these people are not going to do that. I'm just trying to give you an illustration. The people knew, Second Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and hear their land. These weren't even God's people. And they knew how to get God's attention. When a sinner know how to get God's attention better than the saint, something wrong. Jonah did not preach a message of repentance. Jonah preached a message of destruction. But the king had enough sense. I need to tell these people they need to fast. They need to pray. They need to put sackcloth and ashes and burlap. What do you mean by burlap? Burlap was goat's hair. It was made out of goat's hair that they put on their shoulders. See, some of y'all women wouldn't have made it because you would have thought, oh, God giving me some other hair. So you ain't sorry. I got some more hair since he got some. You missing the point? The goat hair is for the burlap. Then you're supposed to put the ashes on the burlap and you worried about new hair instead of telling God you sorry. You missing the point? That's goat hair. I got new this goat hair. All right, girl, it don't never get dirty. It's easy to wash. It's 10 times, 100 times better than yakky pony. You're not sorry. Talking about goat hair. You're not sorry. All right, we're moving on. <laughs> we're going to skip that. Jonah 3 and 10. And, and, and this seems like it's counterproductive. God saw the works. Jonah 3, verse 10. And they turned from their evil way. God saw the works, and they turned from their evil way. And God repented of evil that he said that he would do unto them. In other words, it's not that God was evil, but it would have been evil for what God was going to do to you. But God saw their works. Now, hold on. We really can't work for God's grace. In other words, God saw their heart. And their heart turned away from their way. God saw their intention. God saw their mentality. God saw their motive, right? When God sees that your motive, that you're really sorry for what you've done, he returns or he says, you know what? What was going to happen to you will not happen to you because I see now you got your mind, your intentions, uh, and your motives in the right place. Uh, instead of taking you out, I'm going to use you. Hallelujah. I'm going to use you as a pun. Instead of taking you out, I'm going to use you. God saw their heart. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is looking at your heart. Not just the words that's coming out of your mouth. 
People can say they sorry all day long to God, but is it really coming from their heart? People will say they can change all day, every day, but is it really coming out of their heart? Uh, God is looking at your heart posture, and your posture has to be in the right place to receive this level. Can I get somebody to shout amen? In other words, God was going to reward them for their heart posture. We're going to skip this. Amen. Jonah 3 and 8. But let no man beast be covered to sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Let them every turn from his evil way and the violence there was in. In other words, Jonah repented. We're going to skip that. But I, I want to talk about a little bit of Jonah 4. See, Jonah, I want to go to Jonah, the fourth chapter, the first to the third verse. Let's go to the first. Jonah 4, verse 1. So just back up one more. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. And he was very angry. He was very angry because he preached destruction. And all of a sudden, God told him, I'm not going to destroy him. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, with this not my sin, when I was yet in my own country, I was in my own house, I was in my own bed, I was watching Netflix, come on. I was minding my own business. I fled before you to Tarshish because I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, of great kindness to repent of the evil. In other words, Jonah was basically saying, I believe in greasy grace. In other words, I believe in selfish grace. Hold on. God could have checked him. Didn't I just save you from the belly of the fish? And now you got the nerve to try to withhold back my grace on whom I want to give it to. Didn't you just get out of a situation that almost cost you your life? And now I give you a second chance and all you do is complain about it. Okay. We're living in a generation of people when God give us what we ask for instead of giving God praise that he gave us another chance to fulfill our assignment. We complain, we complain, we criticize, we complain, we go, oh, I can't get no help in this place. How many times are we going to complain to God to give us something we ask for and when he give it to us, we complain again? Jonah complained complain and he whined he did not like God's decision but the last time I check uh, you don't have to like God's decision but you better go with God's decision you don't, you don't like God's decision for your life uh, but you have to go with God's decision for your life uh, cause God was destroyed down if he want to he can take you out if he want to but the fact that I'm still here that's enough reason to give God the praise I was yet in my country and I fled before you to Tarshish because I knew you was a gracious God. In other words, Jonah got amnesia. If we ain't careful, we'll get amnesia. We forget about the grace God gave for us and then we don't want to give that grace to somebody else. I look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't get amnesia. I say, you know what God delivered you from. So let, let me skip down a little bit because we got to get out of here. I, I just want to skip down, but, but I do want to make this point. Amen. Jonah was exceedingly displeased and angry because Nineveh was spared from destruction. So, so, so Jonah was, was in a mix between uh, his assignment and also his emotions. Have you ever been in the middle between God's assignment over your life Versus your emotions. Oh, I can't talk to nobody. You know what God wanted you to do, but your emotions got in the way. Emotions make you cry sometimes. Okay. H right. time, boys. I forgive me. I'm still saying. Emotions make you cry sometimes. Emotions make you. Cry. Who doing that beat? So his emotions got him distracted from his assignment. Although you don't want to do it, your emotions can't get in the way, man. Your emotions can't get in the way, women. Don't let your emotions drive you to the point where you tell God no. 
How many emotions have allowed them to get outside of God's will? Because you felt like people weren't doing you right? You felt like, hey amen, it should have been your chance and they gave some, to somebody else? They gave somebody else a job so your emotions got in the way. So you know what? I'm going to quit. Amen. You ain't worried about bills or none of that. No one getting wet. If you quit like that, you can't get unemployment. You got to be smart. Don't let your emotions get in the way. So Jonah <laughs> was a prophet, but he was a prophet with an attitude. Ooh, that's a whole nother sermon. We can't go there. He was a prophet. But Pastor Bay, he had an attitude. We, we, we got an anointing, but with our anointing, we got an attitude. And we want to use our anointing or our gift when we want to use it. God might be telling you to minister to somebody on the plane, but hold on, I got an attitude. I'm a prophet, I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher, I'm a vessel of God, and I got an attitude. I only want to use it when it's accessible to me. I only want to use it when it's convenient for me. I only want to use it when I will agree with you. So what's going on now, we got a lot of prophets. We got a lot of people who prostitute their gift, and they got an attitude with it. One thing that's worse is an anointed individual with a bad attitude. You're anointed, but your attitude stinks. You can deliver people, but nobody can talk to you. you your attitude is nasty. That's why God can't take you to the next dimension. You can cast out a devil, but I'm not sure if you don't have a devil with that bad attitude that you have. Your nose is stuck up in the air like you're a perfect individual. You're a prophet, but you got a bad attitude. God had delivered me from people who got bad attitudes. They got an awesome gift, but their attitude is nasty. They, 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 they make it seem like it's your fault for what they've been through. I'm sorry you've been through hell in your life, but I'm not the one who caused it. And I'm not going to allow that being an excuse for you to take it out on me. Some people would take out what they've been through in their life on you. All because I'm having a good day. You mad because I don't got a bad attitude? God is dismissing prophets with a bad attitude because nobody can touch them. Nobody can talk to them. They think they better than they are. They think they are God. A, a prophet with an attitude. They ain't God. So Jonah had a prophetic voice, but he had a bad spirit. Matter of fact, his spirit got so bad, he said, God, go ahead on and kill me. Now, Jonah, you didn't mean that. Because if you meant that, you wouldn't have prayed that God delivered you from the belly of the fish. So what happens, Jonah, you really don't mean what you're saying. How many of you ever said to yourself you really didn't mean what you said? You said it, but you really didn't mean it. You said, God, take me out, but you just prayed God delivered you and bring you out. So if that's the case, you just should have stayed there in the fish and about to drown. But obviously, you really didn't want to die like you thought you wanted to die. That's why a praise came out of your mouth. I can't get no help in the place. Sometimes you got to make up in your mind. I got to have a praise come out of my mouth. So Jonah had a bad attitude. Jonah was displeased with God. So what God did, Jonah said, I'm going to sit here, amen, underneath this, this, this area. While he sat underneath the area, God had allowed a plant to grow up. And he allowed the plant to grow up and offered Jonah some shade. He's like, Lord, I'm just going to die right here. But the shade offered Jonah temporary comfort. Then the next day, God had caused a worm to destroy the plant. Oh, then he was upset about the plant. So God, hold on Jonah, you're more concerned about the plant than you are people's lives. Some of us can be more concerned about things than we are people's lives. We can be more concerned about pets and animals than we can be concerned about people's lives. Y'all not going to help me. We can be more concerned about everything else than we're concerned about people's lives. Hold on, Jonah. You got grace, and you wanted me to forgive you. Come on. But you don't want me to forgive these people. This is a whole nation of people who has a major component to play in my will. Why shouldn't I offer them repentance? Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, 
don't have greasy grace. Say, don't have selfish grace. Say, if God forgave you, he got the right to forgive others. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor. Say, if God forgave you, say, he got the right to forgive who he want to forgive. If you believe that, open up your mouth and give God praise all over the place. You ought to give God praise that the situation swallowed you up, but it didn't kill you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I was swallowed up by grace when I could have been ate up by a shark. Oh, somebody ought to open up your mouth and give God. I don't know why I'm talking to some Jonas. I believe there's five Jonas. That's why God had us going here for two weeks. The Lord said, if you open up your mouth right now, whether you want to do it or not, I'm going to spit you up to be at the place you're supposed to be. No, 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 no. I had to look at myself. The Lord said, Darius, you have some Jonah experiences. There's some things I told you to do that you have not done. And there's some stuff that God have told you to do that maybe you have not done. You didn't like your assignment. You didn't like your city. You didn't like the job he gave you. Y'all yeah, not gonna help me. You didn't like the people he connected to you. But God say in this season, uh, you better be connected like never before. Uh, it's not what you wanna do. Uh, it's not where you wanna work. Uh, it's not what you wanna drive. Uh, it's not where you wanna go. Uh, but you gotta be like Jonah. Thank God. God, if I'm in this situation, uh, I need you to get me out of this uh, because I know it's spitting me out for a purpose in your name. Uh, Y'all look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, say, I don't want to go through another season uh, of being disobedient. Uh, say, I got to be at the right place uh, and at the right time. Uh, and sometime what we'll do, uh, we'll pay to get out of God's will. Uh, but in this season in our life, uh, I can't pay to get out of God's will, but I got to praise God because I paid to get out of his will and my praise don't get me back in his will. Y'all look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, say, y'all pay a lot of power. Say, y'all pay a lot of money to get out of God's will and I might can't recoup it back, but I thank God that I got to praise that'll swallow me in a situation that was about to take my life. But the situation that was about to take your life was the best thing that happened to you because it made you be in the place of shield, be in the place of hell where your mind was constrained and you made up in your mind and you thought of the goodness of Jesus. If you get me out of it, I'm going to hit the ground running. Wherever you tell me to go, I will go. Wherever you send me, God, I will be there. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, say, I'm right this time. I got another chance. I got a second time around, and I'm going to be good on it. I'm not going to be a prophet with a bad attitude. I'm not going to be a servant with a nasty attitude. God, you forgave me, and I'm gonna have grace for my enemy. In other words, God was trying to teach Jonah a lesson, and the lesson was, you gotta love your enemies. Look at a neighbor, and I hope they're your friend, but if they're your enemy, I want you to tell them anyway. Say, my job is to love you, whether you my friend or my enemy, I don't know you anything, but all I owe you is to love you. So what I found out that Jonah had a loving problem. Jonah didn't love his enemies like the word said. And the problem with some of us, we got a lot of judgmental. We got a lot of grudges that's in our heart. We don't know how to let go. But I'm here to let you know of on the day. If God let it go, all the stuff you did in your life, you better let that offense go. You better have grace on your sister. Have grace on your brother. Have grace.
grace on your mother. Have grace on your pastor. Have grace on your member. Have grace on your family. Have grace on your job. Have grace on your supervisor. You better love your enemy. That's what real love is. It's easy to love when we got good friendship. It's easy to love when you haven't offended me. But what God did, I said what God did, he turned the narrative. He said, Nineveh, I'm not going to take you out because I see your posture. Do anybody in here got a posture of praise? And your posture is going to change God's position in your life. You was far away from God, but your posture is going to get you closer back at the place where you're supposed to be. Do I got anybody that got their posture back, that got their praise back, that got their shout back? You was far away from God, but like the king of the Assyrians, or like the king of the Ninevites, I got my burl out, I got my ashes. We gon' pray, we gon' fast. I gotta get back in good standings with my God. I'm not gonna use grace as an excuse to do what I wanna do, but I got a mind change. Back to Noah, uh, I'm gonna repent, uh, and my actions uh, is gonna follow the words uh, that's out of my mouth. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry uh, for what I said. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry uh, for what I done. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry uh, for what I did uh, and what I didn't do. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry. Uh, I paid a vow uh, to get out of your will. Uh, I'm not going to lie, God. Uh, I don't like it. Uh, I could be making more money. Uh, but God saying, uh, that ain't the job. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry. Uh, I could be in the big city. Uh, but God is saying, uh, that is not the city. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry. Uh, I think I could be uh, in a better church. Uh, they give me everything. Uh, that I ask and desire, but God is saying, that is not the church I want you in. You can't make decisions for your own life. I know you're grown, but it ain't about you. It's about the hand of God over your life. You gotta be at the place God wants you to be. If you don't like it, you gotta deal with it. Sometime uh, what God to do, uh, He would give us a assignment, Pastor. I might don't like it, uh, but I gotta do it. Uh, it caused me some sleepless nights, uh, but I gotta do it. Uh, it caused me backbite, uh, it caused me hell, uh, it caused me calamity, uh, but I gotta do it. Uh, you gotta do uh, the assignment of God uh, over your life uh, if you like it or not. Uh, if your mind I don't like it. I'm sorry, mama. I gotta do it. If daddy don't like it, I gotta do it. If he don't like it, I know what God he has for me. If you don't like my church, I'm sorry. This what God want me. If you don't like my city, I'm sorry. This what God want me. I gotta preach to Nineveh. I don't want to go. They are my enemies. But I gotta pray. I gotta ask God. Heal my enemy. Look at a neighbor. Shout neighbor. Say pray to God. Forgive your enemies. And pray God. Give you the grace to pray for your enemy. Don't hold it for what they done. You see, Jesus, I said, Jesus, he had grace and he had grace even before they said they were sorry for forgive them for they not know what they do. They not know what they say. They don't know how they treated you. But God said, have grace. Oh, 
love with your enemies. I know you don't like them, but you gotta forgive them. You're holding up your blessing. You're holding up your deliverance. You're holding up your breakthrough with your bad attitude, with your nasty self. I know you're perfect. I know you suck up, but it's for your time to be obedient to the word of God. It's your hour to be obedient. You can't run another day. You can't run another hour. You can't run to another city. You can't run to another church. You can't run to another leader. You can't run. You can't run. You can't hide. So what God did. To swallow you, to take you, to pick you up, turn you around, and place my feet on solid ground. I gotta be what God want me to be. Not my mind, not your will, not my will, but your will. Come on and give God praise. I didn't mean to do that. Come on and bless me. Come on and bless me. Thank you. You ought to give God praise. Yeah. Come on, open up your mouth. where God wants you to go. You might don't want to be there, but that's where you need to be. You gotta be at the place you don't want to be. That's when you know you got the right assignment over your life. I gotta be where I don't want to be. I gotta be what I don't agree with. You might don't want to be at the job, but you at where God planted you. I don't want to deal with them, but you got to deal with what you don't want to deal with. That's how you get the oil over your life, by giving God a yes until he released another assignment over you. I don't want to go, but I got to go. I don't want to give God a yes, but I got to give God a yes, Brianna. It ain't based on what I want to do. Want to serve at the next level, but what is God telling you to serve at another level? You don't want to get back involved, but what is God telling you to get back involved? You don't want to do more, but what is God telling you to do more? You can't tell God what you want and what you don't want to do. You ought to open up your mind. Come on, give God glory. I dare you to put a praise on it right now. My praise that I will be obedient to God's word. I will be obedient to whatever God say. Whether I want to or not, on the count of five, give God praise for the next three minutes. We're going to get out of here real quick. Somebody open up your mouth.
to keep you, to spit you in the right direction when you was going in the opposite direction. I did prepare it to kill you. If you believe God prepares some stuff to get you focused on what you need to focus on, I tell you to give God a praise right now. Thank God. I don't want you to think about nobody else but yourself right now. We've all been through some Jonah experiences. Hallelujah. If you've been through any area where you've been disobedient, where you told God no, and God's grace still stepped in, I dare you to put a praise on it right now. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for sparing me when I told you no. You say, Lord, I'm not going to deal with them. I'm not going to deal with it. Whatever your it was, whatever the situation was, and God say handle it anyway. Somebody give God praise and he gives you the grace to move forward. outside of God's will and he should have been delayed in getting to Nineveh but God prepared a fish to swallow him to go at a faster speed to put him on the place at the right time in other words the situation God prepared for you it's going to spring you forward where you will not be delayed you're going to be right on time so look at your neighbor and say neighbor say this your time this your hour that God prepared a situation to spring you forward. Say you're not late, but you're going to spring forward by that prepared thing. Somebody shot right on time. If you believe you're going to get there right on time, you ain't going to go away. to God and his work on another level. Hallelujah. In other words, it's going to be out of your inconvenience. The Lord said, if you put a praise on it, hallelujah, I'm going to reward you for this sacrifice. You don't want to do it because you don't want to feel like you're getting God's way and you don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. But God said, you make a commitment now, even in your mind, and put a praise on it. And we all going to put a praise on it together. The Lord said, I'm going to reward you for this next level of yes. So if that's you, I want you to put a praise on it. You're going to commit to another level in God. One, two, three, four. I'm married to the backslider. I haven't divorced you.
you don't work. They can't get set free if you don't work. They can't get healed if you don't open up your mouth. They can't get set free unless you put your hands on a little bit more. They can't be brought out into your mind made up. I got to work. Somebody look at your name and say, neighbor, we got to work it together. We all got to take a little bit more. Work it together. Work it together. Work it together. Work it together. I'm working together. We work it together. We work it together. after me say it's going to take everybody no let's say it let's say it's going to take everybody so find yourself busy in jesus name hallelujah it's going to take everybody if you believe the lord someone shout glory Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. It's going to take everybody. Hallelujah. Put those hands together for them one more time. Hallelujah.